I can't sum up Mike's exceptional career in a minute or two, so I'm not even going to try. Suffice it to say, he's done a brilliant job as the CEO of Excel. Mike is too modest to admit it, but it's fair to say he saved the company and transformed it into the outstanding enterprise it is today. His accomplishments at Excel have been extraordinary, as are his ongoing contributions to the industry, whether it's working through asbestos litigation, transforming environmental laws, or leading the debate on regulatory reform. Mike's voice is a leading voice in and on the most important issues facing our industry. And so it gives me great pleasure to present the 2012 Double I Award to my good friend, Mike McGavick. As I contemplated standing before you, I found I was constantly thinking of one question. And I'm going to give you the answer first. So the answer is, it's two part. The Scottish Enlightenment, but I know you're already thinking of that, <laughs> and nightmares. Now this is not a description of a college student. This is the answer to a great question, which is, how could it be that this organization has only been around for seven short years, and here we are, a thousand strong, 1.3 million more committed, having filled this entire room? Is that not an astonishing achievement? Now, as I thought about that question, I did think about the Scottish Enlightenment. Because back then in the 1750s, right early in the same age of reason that gave rise to our great nation, people were debating a really difficult question, which is how can self-interest be married to the community's interest? And there were two schools of thought that emerged. One was centered on Adam Smith, whom we all know from the book The Wealth of Nations, right? Who basically explained how our self-interest as business people can be harnessed to the common good, as he said, by that invisible hand that causes you to do good for others and to thereby be rewarded. That was how he answered the question. He was at Glasgow, but up in Edinburgh, there was David Hume. David Hume took the same question and said, but it is the deep enlightenments of benevolence, the idea that we must do well by others or we will eventually be harmed. So they took the same question and came to slightly different answers. But in this event tonight, those ideas are perfectly merged. I can think of no industry that is a better expression of the idea that by our own self-interest, but doing for others, we make great things happen than what we do in insurance. And I can think of no proof that we understand Hume's teaching that we must look at the outer community and do better by them too than the IICF. Now, you might guess, as a proud American-born son of Ireland, it pains me to tell a Scottish story. <laughs> and I now, of course, lead an Irish company, which makes it doubly worse. But you know, it always reminds me of the time the Englishman, the Scotsman, and the Irishman went out for a drink. Being of good taste, they chose Guinness. As the beers arrived, they each looked down, and each noticed astonishingly, a fly in each beer. The Englishman said, I can't do accents, the Englishman said, Barkey, there is a fly in my beer, take it away and bring me another. The Scotsman looks down, picks up the fly, shakes it off, throws it over his shoulder, says, waste not, want not, down it goes. And the Irishman picks it up, glares at it and says, spit it out, you wee bastards.
Now, so that brings us to the nightmare part of the talk. I said there were two answers, the Scottish Enlightenment and nightmares. Now, my first nightmare is a bit serious. And here I have to refer to Sandy. You know, Sandy is perfect proof yet again of that combined impulse, right? Our industry will put what? Through our good work over many years, about 20 billion or something will plow back into these economies through the claims that will be made on the industry for Sandy. Again, that self-interest of the hidden hand, the invisible hand in our great businesses. At the same time tonight, another $100,000 coming in charity into the victims. Once again, both impulses at work. My nightmare about Sandy, though, isn't the event itself. I have to tell you, and I bet many in this room feel the same way. If I watch one more storm approach, where the politicians are already denigrating our industry before it even makes landfall, I am going to throw up. Our people were out there helping people to prepare for the storm. They were there immediately upon its completion to help people rebuild. They are still doing so, and they will be doing so. I am deeply proud of our industry. We do the right thing, and we don't need them to tell us what to do. And I, I, I make no claim that we've done perfectly. It's a human endeavor involving millions of people. But we will do right. Now, the second part of my nightmare, though, does relate back to this question, the IICF. How did it make so much so well so quick? And this has to do with this great room. This is a remarkable room, is it not? And filled to the brim all the way down to these balconies. You know, when I think about it, though, as a matter of nightmares, this room would probably usually be filled with bankers, not insurers. I mean, really, this is the heartbeat of the world's financial center. You can imagine more dinners here full of bankers than us. In fact, sometimes I wonder how we get into these deals, you know? And, but the reason it relates is simple. Think about the financiers' world. They spread risk to do what? To fuel people's dreams. It's a wonderful thing. We spread risk to deal with their nightmares. First, to think of ways to prevent them from occurring in the first place, and then to stand in and try to make it right when the worst might happen. Because of our peculiar focus on the nightmares, we truly do understand the pain and need that is out there in society. And so it is truly not surprising to me at all, as a member of this great industry, that in these short years, we have come to display so powerfully our generosity. And I truly believe that someday it will be true that both our day job and its good and this night work we do on behalf of others will be fully appreciated by the society at large. On behalf of Excel, my colleagues 4,000 strong around the world, I want to say thank you. We are deeply grateful to be honored here tonight for our role in that, both in our company, through the IICF, and elsewhere around the globe. I want to particularly thank Brian Dupero. Brian literally skipped out on an event that he was required to be at to be with us tonight. And as he retires, I can only observe the more time we spend in his presence, the better off we are as an industry. And then finally, to each and every one of you and your families and friends, my colleagues and I at Excel, wish you the warmest and happiest of holiday seasons. Thank you very much.